어, 안고 있죠? อองค์ยุทธยาประกาศหมดต่อกัจจมรการนิติสัมมากาปฏิบัติต่อตัวนี้องค์ยาประดาวปฏิกาจุนตือกรมดำนางสาธารณะนำไปบรรโตกระดับ
Staying within the same document, I move to English ERN 0028055. Five five six. Khmer zero zero six six two two five eight and French zero 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 nine three slash nine four. The extract has this as the heading. The Phnom Penh traitors are in total disarray and are cornered on the defensive on all fronts, while FAPLNK remain on the offensive, attacking the enemy without respite. And then further on the page. But when they were exposed in Phnom Penh, FAPLNK launched on an assault on the 14th of March against positions on the Kodak Islands and Oknate on the Mekong River, six kilometers from the Royal Palace Phnom Penh. In one day and one night, they liberated the islands, wiped out an enemy battalion, and helped 50,000 people to cross over to the liberated zone. And just beneath that, this extract. A day later, on March the 15th, FAPLNK again launched a swift and surprise attack on the city of Udon. On the 18th of March, it says 1874, Udon was totally liberated. An enemy division was totally wiped out, and 30,000 inhabitants of that town and surrounding areas successfully crossed over to the liberated zone. It is only after FAPLNK had totally destroyed the military positions, the administrative power, detention camps, the pacification centers at Udong, that the traitors rushed reinforcement troops to recapture the town of Udong. But they too were totally trounced and decimated in great numbers. Next, please, can I move to document number E3-2728. English 0039-0921. P. Khmer 00602506 and French 00602498. This relates to a statement given by Pol Pot in Beijing on the 3rd of October 1977. The extract reads as follows, under the title, Pol Pot on evacuation of Cambodian city residents. Pol Pot gave a press conference in Peking on the 3rd of October, as reported by the NCNA, in which he spoke of the victories won in various fields by the Cambodian people 
under the leadership of the party. One important factor in the success of the Revolutionary War in Cambodia, he was reported as saying, had been the evacuation of city residents to the countryside. This had been decided in February 1975, quote, because we knew that before the smashing of all sorts of enemy spy organizations, our strength was not strong enough to defend the revolutionary regime. The enemy's secret agent network lying low in our country was very massive and complicated. But when we crushed them, it was difficult for them to stage a comeback. Their forces were scattered in various cooperatives which are in our grip. Thus, we have the initiative in our hands. The enemy dare not attack from outside. Close quote. The next document is from the Fibis collection for March 1975. The English ERN is 00413180. There are no Khmer and French translations, but they have been requested. This is a telegram forming part of the US Department of State records for March 1975, and this document is a telegram from the American Embassy in Rome to Washington, and it states as follows. Vatican's Deputy Secretary of State, Archbishop Benelli, called Illing to his office morning March 15, and this is 1975, to inform him that Pope Paul, deeply anguished over situation in Cambodia. Apostolic delegates in Saigon, Archbishop Le Maître has sent reports to Vatican in last few days which indicate that Khmer Rouge are wantonly massacring innocent civilians in areas they have recently Conquered. These reports from Le Maître, based on information obtained from Catholic clergy in combat areas, as well as from other sources. The next document is D366 slash seven point one point three six six Merci, Monsieur le Président. Bonjour à l'ensemble de la Chambre et à l'ensemble des partis. Et je prie mon confrère de bien vouloir m'excuser de l'interrompre. Mais j'ai un problème au sujet de ce document qui est présenté aujourd'hui comme un document clé. C'est un document qui ne figure ni en note de bas de page de l'ordonnance de clôture, ni sur aucune liste des partis. Et dans ces conditions, s'il n'y a pas eu de requête comme nouveau document, je pense que nous ne pouvons pas l'évoquer aujourd'hui dans le cadre de la présentation des documents clés de, du bureau de, des coprocureurs. Donc, je... J'objecte à ce stade-ci que l'on puisse l'évoquer comme document clé. Mr. President, can I explain the history of this document? 
Firstly, it is in the closing order footnotes. Secondly, it was part of 50 documents that the defence of Ian Sari had picked as not having been subject to debate prior to the admissibility hearing. Thirdly, it was then in the Ingsari list for debate, and that was on an occasion when the OCP asked the trial chamber to exclude 24 documents that had not been debated upon. This document, Mr. President, was then in a list provided to all parties in an email and no objection has, was stated to this document. As far as I understand it, this document is still waiting a final decision from the trial chamber, but it's one that I do seek to rely on as being of particular relevance in this case. If I read the document to you and you decide in due course it is admissible and relevant, then it's on the case file. If you decide, having heard this document, for whatever reason it's inadmissible, it's not on the case file. But the prosecution do respectfully submit that this is a highly relevant document of particular importance. It is dated the 17th of March 1975, that is one month prior to the evacuation. So uh, I repeat my respectful submission is that it should be referred to and the chamber then decided on relevance. Une question adressée à Monsieur le coprocureur. À, à quelle note de bas de page de l'ordonnance de clôture euh, se trouve ce document Parce que nous avons cherché et euh, nous avons effectivement vu euh, ce document auquel s'objectait à l'époque notre confrère de l'équipe de Yangsari. Et par erreur, parce que nous avons vérifié, il a cité ce document comme figurant à la note de bas de page 377 de l'ordonnance de clôture. Or, ce document n'y figure pas. Nous avons vérifié. Donc là, encore une fois, ce document ne figure pas à la note de bas de page 377. Si Monsieur le coprocureur a un autre élément à nous fournir, mais encore une fois, il ne figure pas à, dans le cadre des notes de bas de page de l'ordonnance de clôture. Et s'il a été indiqué par erreur par la suite par mon confrère de l'équipe Yeng Sari qui y était, ce n'est pas le cas. Donc, euh, ça me, euh, effectivement, votre décision est pendante là-dessus et parce qu'elle est pendante, euh, je pense qu'on ne peut pas présenter ce document comme étant un document clé à ce stade. Mr. President, it's absolutely fair that my learned friend should ask for the footnote. I'm trying to do a search at the moment uh, on case map to check this. And can I say that the information I'm passing to the court, that it is in a closing order footnote, was passed to me by one of my fellow counsel? So, can I suggest this, Mr. President, that I move on? I know that others in my team will try and obtain the closing order footnote, and perhaps if we could come back to this in a few moments' time. Thank you, Mr. President. I move now on to document number E3-3295. This is a report of a Chinese journalist's delegation to Cambodia. And the first extract is on English page 00419155. Khmer 00751899 and French 00756905 through 6. 
So this is the report from the Chinese journalists, and the first extract is as follows. One day towards the end of March, and this is March 1975, we visited the Phnom Penh Front headquarters. We were warmly received, and guests and hosts chatted about friendship and discussed the victorious situation of the impending liberation of Phnom Penh. During our visit, we were received at one forward position by Q. Sampong, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of National Defence of the Royal Government of National Union of Cambodia and Commander-in-Chief of the People's Armed Forces of National Liberation of Cambodia. We enjoyed a very cordial and friendly conversation with him. Hu Yun, Minister of the Interior, Cooperatives and Communal Reforms, and Hu Nim, Minister of Information and Propaganda, also received the delegation and honoured it at a banquet in the name of the National United Front of Cambodia and the cabinet. In another section, still with the same pages, this extract. The Chinese journalists' delegation reluctantly left the heroic Cambodian people and the beautiful land of Cambodia as the good news came pouring in that the people's armed forces had liberated Nia Luang and taken Pochentong Airport. We all felt that the liberation of Phnom Penh was imminent. But as the monsoons were settling in and would make travel difficult, we felt we must return home. On our way, we heard the good news of Phnom Penh's liberation on April the 17th. We jubilantly raised our arms in salute to the historic great victory of the fraternal Cambodian people. The next document is E3 stroke. 27. This is the first OCIJ questioning between Q Sampong and the investigating judges. The relevant question by co-investigating judge Marcel Le Monde appears at English page 0015-6743. This is Khmer page 0015-6614 and French page 0015-6646. And Judge Lamond asked the following question. Where did you come from? With whom were you living beforehand? Answer. For about 10 days, I had been at the headquarters of Pol Pot to the west of Udon. I would like to assert that I did not participate in the work of the headquarters. I was just present in the headquarters and observed the events upon which Pol Pot briefed me once in a while. Question. Who else was present with you at that time? I think that there were just the two of us. I'm now moving, Mr. President, to a theme I identified in the introduction, which is moving on to statements made by Ying Sari 
The next document is E3-611. It is an article published in the Chicago Tribune on the 18th of July, 1978. It's written by a journalist, Ronald Yates. Suri did admit to the wholesale denuding of Cambodian cities, adding that some two-thirds of the population has been shifted arbitrarily to the countryside and into several new economic zones and cooperatives. Quote, we have no reason to massacre our own people, close quote, Sari said. The next document is E3-550. This is an article published in the Newsweek magazine on the 8th of September 1975. The journalist involved was a man called Pringle. So this is a question from Pringle to Ian Suri. Why did your forces evacuate the population of Phnom Penh after they captured the capital on April 17? Ying Sari. There were two reasons, the first of which was food. We thought there were two million people in Phnom Penh, but when we entered, we discovered three million. Pringle asked, what was Pringle the second Basu reason? Ying Sari's answer, we discovered a document detailing a secret political military plan by the US Central Intelligence Agency and the defeated Long Nol regime to spread confusion after our victory. The next document is E169, stroke 4.1.1.1. The first extract is on English page 0081-5131. French 0081-5912 and Khmer 0080-9797. This is an extract from Revolutionary Male and Female Youths, number 7, July 1975. We have now arrived in a new era of the democratic revolution. We have liberated the entire country. We have control over the state authority countrywide. The Kampuchea society has become the new society in which no one can oppress another. There is neither rich nor poor, and there is no oppressive class and no oppressed class. All Kampuchean people live equally and do the laborious work together to produce food, to support their living, and to defend and rebuild the country together. This is the new trait of the Kampuchea society. Within the same document, English one page further, so ERN 00815133, the Khmer page 00809793.
and the French, I hope, is one page on, so 00815913. If the party had taken no measures to evacuate all the people out of Phnom Penh and other provincial towns, the enemy might have attacked and pounced on us from behind and smash our revolutionary forces to pieces. Or at least, the enemy would have been able to burrow inside our revolutionary stance, cause chaos in the revolutionary ranks, break up the party's discipline and solidarity, making the revolutionary stance fade away. And then the enemy could have smashed us in any day to dissolve our historical great victory of the 17th of April. Next, I move to document number E3-622. This is a document dated the 14th of June, 1978, and it uh, reflects a broadcast entitled Campuchian Delegation in Japan. So this was published in the Los Angeles Times. And it's quoting what Ying Sari is telling the journalists and what the journalist is reporting. Refugees reaching Thailand have said thousands of people died when the Cambodian regime drove most of the population of Phnom Penh into the countryside without adequate training or equipment for farming. Yugoslav journalists and Swedish diplomats who toured Cambodia this spring said Phnom Penh, the capital, appeared nearly empty. Bien Seri denied this, saying, quote, about 200,000 people live in the capital. Of course, the evacuation of Phnom Penh was originally a temporary measure. However, the people are now satisfied with country life and they do not want to return to the city, Ying Siri said. The Deputy Prime Minister said he did not know how many people died in the evacuation. He said stories of thousands of people being killed were, quote, fabrications intended to defame democratic Kampuchea, close quote. After the war ended, he said, 85% of our people became sick with malaria and could not walk. That was the reason for the evacuation of Phnom Penh. It was a necessary measure in order to prevent people from dying. Close quote. But he said most contract. of the malaria cases had been cured. The next document is E3-624. This is a document that was published in the New York Times. 29th of July, 1978. It's entitled Belgrade, Yugoslavia, 28th of July. The heading is Cambodian Defends 1975 Closing of Nation to Prevent a Civil War. And the text reads as follows. Cambodia's Foreign Minister, Ying Sari, 
said today that the closing of his country and evacuation of Phnom Penh after the communists took over in 1975 had been necessary, quote, because otherwise we would have had a civil war. Our complexities and difficulties would have been greater, he said, and more would have died. There would have been a civil war, and that would open the door to neighbours to intervene. And then on the same page, this extract. The difficulty of supplying rice to the people of Phnom Penh was the reason initially given for the evacuation of the capital, and Mr. Ian Sari repeated it. But he also said for the first time that the revolutionaries considered the city to be full of agents, ammunition dumps, and conspiracies to undermine the new regime, and therefore felt total evacuation to be necessary for defence. I move on now, Mr. President, to some speeches of Q. Song Pong. And the first document is D366. Stroke 7, point 1, point 1, This is an extract from a publication written by Stephen Hedder entitled Pol Pot and Q. Sampong. The relevant English ERN is 0008-7771-1. There are no documents in Khmer and French. I have asked for translations to be done. The document is headed with this heading, Q Song Pong and the Liberation. And Steve Hedder says as follows. In what appears to have been a calculated abuse of the trust in which he was held. Q. Sampong actively helped just before the end of the war to set up long non military personnel and civil servants for easy execution. The esteem in which he was held meant that some of them allowed themselves to become sitting ducks for murder. Thus, as the Communist Party of Kampuchea advanced towards an all-out military victory during the first four months of 1975, Q. Sampon twice signalled those who had been fighting against it that only the seven top leaders among them would be executed upon defeat. On the 24th stroke 25th February, Q. Sampon chaired the Second National Congress a meeting of members of Grunk who resided inside the country and 273 representatives of Funk associations and the army. The Congress declared that the seven traitors must die, but that other high-ranking Khmer Republic personalities could join the Sihanouk side. I interject here to explain that there is a Phibis extract dealing with the uh, order to kill the seven traitors. It's been referred to a number of times. That is the Phibis extract for the 26th of February 1975. That is E3-117. To continue with Mr. Hedder's words, 
Then, on the 1st of April 1975, a little more than two weeks before Phnom Penh was captured, Q Sampon spoke in a live broadcast over the Communist Party run radio. He attacked the seven traitors by name but appealed to the officers and men of the Khmer Republic Armed Forces to lay down their arms and join the Sihanouk side. Mr. President, that broadcast of the 1st of April 1975 is document number E3-118. I move next to documentation dealing with the second forced movement. And the first document is E3-216. The first extract is on English. 00850974 Khmer 00008487 and French 00343375 and this is an extract from the record of the standing committee's visit to the uh, zone on the 20th to the 24th of August 1975 the heading is Situation of Economy and Crops Diversification. There is a heading Rice Planting. This has been pushed everywhere. Rice is planted on the old land and is also planted on some other land. Planting rice, brackets, sowing and transplanting, close bracket has been finished in most places in Batambang. Many paddy fields have canals and raised embankments. Water problem has been brought to an extent under mastery. The next extract, English 00850975. Khmer 00008488 through 89 and French 00343376 under the heading Ankar's Guiding Opinions, National Defense Affairs. Concretely, it is imperative to strengthen and expand the cooperatives, employing the strength of the cooperatives as the core, making them the hard core for the absorption of the new people. And on the same page, the function of cooperatives since the total liberation is to absorb all the new people coming out of all the cities and towns, especially Phnom Penh city and in the northwest Batambang. Every type of horrible element exists among the hundreds of thousands of new people in Batambang. But the cooperatives have absorbed them completely, supplying them with food and, moreover, deploying their strength to work. Therefore, the cooperatives must be further strengthened and expanded. We move to English page 00850976. Khmer 008490 and French 00343377 through 78. The question is posed. How must we sort things out? The people have hope. In the northwest zone, the characteristics of the terrain are extremely favorable, which they can clearly see. 
the base people are extremely happy, while the new people are happy. In, whereas in the northwest, there's lots of hope. One or two years from now, the standard of living will rise. The cooperatives will astound as the paddy fields and water situation are transformed, and good supply will be abundant and everyone comfortable, and then it will rise even higher. The same document I moved to English 00850977. Kamaya 00008491 through 92 and French 00343378 through 79 under the heading Economy and Crop Diversification. The party's direction is to diversify crops and build up the country. Workforce must be allocated to those who have free land to plant and diversify crops. Workforce must be provided to any place with more work ability. Therefore, the northern zone and the northwest zone and especially the Northwest, have the most good qualities in terms of the geography of paddy land, which is good and of which there is a lot of surplus, and they must receive more people. Second, possess capital in the form of rice with which they can sustain new people. Third, they have capital in terms of various kinds of implements. We are carrying out shock assaults to diversify crops in the northwest zone in order to improve people's living conditions throughout the country, to find new capital for purchasing materials to be used in building the country and diversifying agricultural and industrial production. If we send workforce to other places with less work ability, we will lose both flute and drum, time and effort. In doing so, our fighting guideline is not right. So we must fight at the right place, where it is effective because we carry out the policy of self-reliance. We must find capital on our own. And under a subheading, workforce arrangement. The Northwest Zone has favourable and unfavourable conditions as follows. Favourable conditions, in general, the land is fertile and also good without using fertilisers. The area is a huge plain with no mountains, easy for us to organise the workforce to do ploughing and to use water. There is also workforce existing. It is better if adding up more force to the zone. The existing force also has experience in diversifying crops. There are some machinery and tools. Under a subheading short fall or points to be considered, firstly not yet in mastery of water problem, and second, its human being strength is insufficient. The labour force must be increased. Three or four hundred thousand more would not be enough. The current strength of one million persons can only work 50%. It's imperative to add four or five hundred thousand more. The next document is E3-781. This is a CPK document dated September 1975. The first extract is Khmer 
French 00543745 and English 00523569. The heading of the document is Examination of Control and Implementation of the Policy Line on Restoring the Economy and preparations to build the country in every sector. There is then a subheading, Control and Implementation of the Party's Policy Line to Build Agriculture. Objective. To examine the control of, the absorption of, and the implementation of the party's agricultural line to push agriculture, to expand in a great leap to the maximum according to the instructions of the party. A little bit lower on the same page. We must quickly prepare to transform from backward agriculture to modern within 10 to 15 years. This is the objective. If we look at this time-wise, we see that as being very fast. The next page, English 00523570, Khmer 00072368, French 00543745. These objectives are set at a very high level. We must really work urgently to achieve these objectives. This matter demands the preparation of forces in every sector to really be orchestrated, machinery, fertilizer, water, etc. Furthermore, we have cooperatives, which are the property of the collective. It is easy to arrange everything. Today, we have only people's cooperative ownership and state ownership. Within the same document, English ERN 0023574, Khmer 0007273, French 0043749 through 50. Where must we assemble the forces of the people? Question mark. We must do this wherever the soil is good, fertile and favourable, not where it is difficult and not good. On the next page, in Batambang in 1976, we must have water in every lowland sector because the majority of that low-lying land has regular water sources. Moving to English ERN 00523576, Khmer 00072376, French 00543752. Estimates are that today's labour force numbers 5 million. These forces have been moved to do various work and there now remain 4,700,000 people. Use some of them in producing rubber, sugarcane and there still remain 4 million. We must work 3 million hectares of land if we expand, then 4 million. English ERN, still within the same document, 00523580.
Khmer 0072382, French 00543755 through 56. In sector 15, we must have the goal of using 30,000 to 40,000 people to work along Highway 5. At this site, we can get one ton per hectare. In the northwest, we can get three to four tons. Within the same document, English RN 00523590, Khmer 00072397, French 00543720, I'll repeat again the French RN. 00543766. In the northwest, we must add an additional force of 500,000 people. Prayer Vihir has requested 50,000 first. In Prayer Vihir, there is the possibility of solving food supplies. Prayer Vihir has 70,000 old people already, so send 20,000 first as we go along. Keeping the same pages, save for English 00523591, it continues. In the north, they need people to be given to Kampong Kom province. The east also needs forces to be given to sectors which are short of people. So each zone must make appropriate preparations and not let things sway back and forth allocating how many to upper level and moving how many to other locations. The next document is E190.1.3.1. It is an article written by the journalist William Shawcross. It was published in the Far Eastern Economic Review on the 2nd of January 1976. The first extract is at Khmer page S0070857-3 and French 0078051-5. The English is S0000515. Grow, grow everything, declares the radio. Particular attention must be paid to rice, for rice means everything. Rice means steel, factories, energy, fuel and tractors. In some places, prayer Vihir, for instance, conditions have been bad. Even so, the current crop is hailed as the greatest ever, although it was planted late at the end of April and throughout May by an unskilled and unwilling labour force. Ying Sari told the Times that Cambodia was determined to become self-sufficient in rice and one of the means appears to have been a second great uprooting of people. Refugees say that in the past two months 
up to 300,000 evacuees from Phnom Penh have been moved again, this time to Batambang province. The journey was apparently made partly by boat and partly by train. Just enough people were left behind in the provinces south and east of Phnom Penh to harvest the rice that they and their fellows had planted in the early summer. The rest have been sent to the country's most fertile region in order to extend the area of next year's dry season crop. The next document, and this is three to go, the next document is D199 stroke 26 Point two, point one eight four. This is a document published through the French press agency. It is a document entitled Cambodia, the New York Times reports new and forced movements with a high death toll. English ERN 00519810. Khmer 00548749. French 00389829. In a dated dispatch from the small Thai border town of Arayan Pratet, the New York Times reported Wednesday that hundreds of thousands of Cambodians are being again moved from one part of the country to another and that many of them have died during these very rigorous journeys. Most of the people are being shifted to the sparsely populated and underdeveloped province of Batamba. According to one refugee who escaped from his country on the 6th of January, a great many of these migrants, most of whom are peasants, are suffering from malaria, typhoid, cholera and dysentery. The refugee, a a male nurse aged 33 years said that 600 refugees died within a month of their arrival in the region of Phnom Srok, where he was staying. The daily writes that this new movement, which rivals in scale to the one that occurred in Phnom Penh last April, apparently began in late October or early November. According to testimonies gathered by the New York Times, deportees are often not allowed to eat anything other than rice and are escorted by armed soldiers. Those who travel by train are packed inside freight cars like fish inside a can, according to a refugee. Other migrants travel to their new destination on foot, in ox-drawn carts, or in lorries. A great many of the migrants have died either of disease or of exhaustion during the journey, which often lasts for many days. Next, document number E3-1181. This again is a CPK document. It is entitled General View of Sector 5, Northwest Zone. And it is dated the 27th of June, 1977. English ERN 00223175, Khmer 00214486, and French 00612289. It moves into the next pages as well.
general view of individual districts. Tmar Pork. The majority of the population was liberated on the 1st of February 1975, and most of them, almost 100%, are post-17 April people. Item 2 on English page 00223176, Kamaya 00214489, and French 00612290. Sisyphon District. The district population is 50,000. Almost 100% of them are new people. Later in the list, Pom Shrok, there is a population of 70,000. Base people amount to approximately 300 families. Approximately 50,000 people have come from Phnom Penh. Local new people consist of more than 20,000. At item 4, the next area is Priya Net Priya. The population of Priya Net Priya prior to the 17th of April was 150 families. More than 70,000 have come from Phnom Penh. And on English, 00223177, Khmer 00214490, and French 00612292, there is the following extract. It is the worst place of starvation, which last year alone killed more than 20,000 people. The final document in this presentation, save for submissions that may have to be made in respect of the document which my learned friend, um, Ms. Gise, has addressed, is e, uh, sorry, D, sorry, I'm going to start again. This document is E3 slash 3316. It is a release from Amnesty International. It is a news release published in New York on the 30th of March 1978. And the extract reads as follows. Some observers had pointed out that it is possible many people became missing due to forcible transfer to work in remote areas. Until recently, there, report, there were reports of constant forced migration. Mr. President, can I please address the document that we were looking at? I'm having confirmation sent by email from others in my office, Mr. President, that despite my earlier comments, I'm having confirmation that this document was not referred to in the closing order or in our final submission, that it was also not in our Rule 80 documents list. Um, can I say this, uh, Mr. President, that given the fact that the status of this document has not yet been ruled finally on by the trial chamber, the o uh, can, can I make on behalf of OCP now an oral application pursuant to Rule 874? 
for that to go on the case file. I understand, of course, you will consider in due course whether this document is admissible or not admissible. If admissible, we obviously invite you to have regard to its contents. Mr. President, that concludes uh, my presentation from the OCP. Can I simply um, say this in conclusion, that I uh, was intending to send to all my learned friends and to the court an index of this presentation so that everyone could see which documents had been referred to and what the ERNs were for each document. I've not actually had the time to discuss that with my learned friends yet. That had been my proposal. That's intended to help everyone in court to identify these documents. I don't know if my learned friends have, any, have any objections to, to that being Je voudrais savoir si la Chambre souhaite que nous répondions à l'application, la requête de en demande de versement de documents nouveaux faite par M. le coprocureur sur le document pour lequel nous avions une objection. Est-ce que la Chambre souhaite que nous répondions maintenant ou elle souhaite que nous fassions notre réponse par écrit C'est la question que je pose puisque, si je comprends bien, il y a confirmation de ce que nous disions tout à l'heure dans le cadre de notre objection et euh, il y a une requête nouvelle pour lequel hein, aucune des parties du côté de la défense n'a été entendue. Donc, je souhaite euh, la position de la Chambre sur ce point afin de, de savoir comment faire, comment procéder. ពីទំនាប់ទូនទៅមេត្តាវីកាពីក្រៃលោកគ្រឹសុំផនថាចំពោះការឆ្លើយតបនេះសូមលោកព្រៃមេត្តាវីប្រើប្រាស់ពេល